Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, what we're going to look at is gradients in Swift UI. So let's get started. So when we're working with gradients, there's actually three that we can use in Swift UI. So there's linear, radial, and angular. But before we dive into each one, let's see how we can actually add a gradient onto the screen and break down what it needs. So we can easily add gradients onto the screen because they're a view. So the first one I'm just going to add in is a linear gradient. So we can just see what this looks like on the screen. So let's do that now. If I just delete this generated text here, you'll notice that when you're working with a gradient like this, so a linear gradient, you actually need to specify the array of colors that we actually want in our linear gradient. Now it's worth noting that we want to, if we wanted to, we could actually add another color to this array of gradients. So we're actually we're not just limited to using two. So let's just add in a blue here. And as you can see, we've now got our white, blue, and it's fading to our black as well. The next thing that you'll notice after you've defined your gradient with a list of all the colors that you want to show on the screen is you can actually specify the start point and the end point. So start point is where the gradient will start. So in this case, we're saying we want it to start from the top and then we want it to end from the bottom. So what you could do is you could actually specify the different points of where you want it to start from. So you could say leading or trailing or top left bottom left so that's something for you to play with and also where it ends so we're going to look at a horizontal example next but right now we're just looking at how we can handle gradients vertically but because our linear gradient is actually on the screen now it's worth noting that we're actually able to apply modifiers onto this as well so if i just use the ignore safe area You'll notice now that our gradient actually fills up the whole screen. And what we could do, we should actually set this gradient as a background with a view on top of it. Like I did in my previous video, color in Swift UI, which you should also check out. You can also do the same thing in here where we just overlay some text on to this gradient within a V within a Z stack. So let's add our linear gradient by holding down the command key and then we'll click on embed in Z stack. And then what we'll do is underneath this, we'll just put some text that just says hello. And as you can see, you can now see our gradient with our text view being rendered on top of it, like so. So like I mentioned before, we could actually control the direction and where we want the gradient to start from. So if I wanted to actually like flip this gradient, so the black was on top here and the white bit was on the bottom, well, all we need to do is just change the start point to be bottom and then the end point, we can change that to be top. And now you'll notice that our gradient has now flipped also, what we could do is we could actually make this a horizontal gradient, so rather than it being a vertical gradient. So in order to do that, we can just change the start point from leading, and then we can also change the end point to trailing. And now you'll notice that our white starts from here, and it starts to fade through the colors to black on the right hand side here. So it's actually really easy to just work with gradients in Swift UI by simply just switching the start and end point of where you want the gradient to start and end. But we can actually get even more control over where we actually want our gradients to start and stop because right now we're just saying that we want to show a white, blue and black. We're not actually specifying how much of the white we want to take up the screen and how much of the blue and black. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to actually define color stops. So color stops are the location of where you want the color to start and stop. We need to change our parameters initializer here from gradient to stops and then use a gradient stops initializer and specify the location and color. So I'm going to type this out now and then break it down. As you can see, we've now got this uh, parameter here called stops and we're using the open parentheses to create our color stops, which is an array of colors. But this time you'll notice that we're actually specifying the color that we want and we're also specifying the location of where we want that color to start and stop so what we're saying here is that we want our black which initially will start from zero to take up 20 percent of the screen so this is actually representing 20 percent of the screen hence why we put 0 0.2 and then what we say is we want our mint color here to start from 20% of the screen here, which is why you can see it starts up from here and then it just fills up the rest of the screen. And you get that sharp, you get that sharp line between them because there's no fade. They both start and stop at the same point. But we want to actually control it. So let's say we wanted our green to actually only start to um, fade 
from 50% of the screen, then all we need to do is just change the location from here to 0 0.5. And now the system will say this green, this green gradient actually starts from halfway from the screen and it will automatically fade between the two colors towards that color stop, as you can see here. So there's also another type of gradient that we can use called a radial gradient. It actually starts from a position and then moves outwards. So what I'm going to do is just create it first and then we'll break it down. So I've just given my text a color of white so you can actually see on the screen because the inside bit of the radial gradient is black. But as you can see, the radial gradient actually works from the center outwards, almost like circular rings. So similarly to our linear gradient, we actually specify an array of colors like so. And then we say we, we want the gradient to start from. So in this case, I'm saying I want the gradient to start from the center of the view, which is in now. And then we say the start radius is 50, which is the inner circle and the end radius is 100, which is the outer circle. Now, what I could do is I could actually change where this circle actually lays itself out. So if I wanted to do that, all I need to do is just change the center. And I could say, for example, I want the center to be at the top. So if I change this to top, you'll notice now that the center of our radial gradient now starts from the top. Now, the final gradient I want to look into is angular gradient. So let's do that now. Angular gradient is similar to all the other gradients as well, where you have to specify an array of colors that you want to show. But if you actually look at the screen, we almost have like a color wheel effect. So with an angular gradient, what it will do is it'll actually cycle through all the colors that you specified in the array, almost like a color wheel. And what you can also do as well, you can actually specify the degrees of where you want the angle to start from as well. So right now, the angle is starting from zero, drawing the colors from zero around, almost like a spectrum. But there's actually another parameter here. So if we actually type in angle and then set the degrees to something like 180, you'll notice that the angle for where the color starts from will change. So let's do that now. And as you can see, it's almost like it's been flipped. So now our angle is 180, and this is where it's being drawn from. So as you can see, it's now cycling through all the colors via an angle like so. So another thing we can do is we can actually use gradients directly with other views via modifiers. And the reason why that is because gradients use the shape style protocol and also the view as well. So we just hold down command and then click into angular gradient, for example. You'll notice that it actually has the shape style and the view protocol. So any modifier that accepts these two, you can actually use a gradient with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use our angular gradient as a background for our text. So let's delete our ignore safe area and then we'll just copy this. And then for our text, we'll set the background to be our gradient. And as you can notice here, when you actually type in background, you'll see that it has a parameter that takes in a shape style. So we're able to use our gradient like so. And now our background has a gradient. Now it's quite tight to the text. So what we're going to do is on our text, we're going to add some padding so we can add some space around it. And now we have our space around our text and then we apply our background onto our text view so it fills it all up if I just zoom in. Now I go into a bit more detail about this in getting started with Swift UI and Xcode and also breaking down Swift UI, which you should also check out. Now, one more cool thing that I wanna show you is how we can actually use gradients as a mask on text as well. So what I mean by that is the text will actually be filled by the gradient color that we specified. So in order to do that, the first thing we want to do is I'm just going to cut our gradient and I'm just going to paste it on top here. And then what, I, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mask modifier. So let's do that now. So as you can see, the mask modifier takes in a view. So the view that we want to pass in is our text view. So let's do that. And we don't need this pattern anymore. And as you can see, if you look closely, you'll notice that our gradient is now masked on top of our text. Just to make this a bit more clearer, I'm actually going to just increase 
the bold, increase it to bold, and I'm actually going to increase the size of our text to be a large title with a, by setting the font. So now we just zoom out a bit. So as you can see, our gradient is now masked on top of our text. So you can actually do this really easily within Swift UI. So that's everything in this video. If you appreciated it and you liked it, then I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment sections below. If you haven't already, then I'd also appreciate it if you like the button and subscribe to the channel, as well as hitting the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.